a really, really warm welcome, um, Silke. It's really nice that you join us today. Um, and I just want to give you a quick introduction, or I want to give a quick introduction about you. Um, Silke Bellanger is the head of digital services and the open science team at the University Library of Basel. And she has been working in libraries since 2006, fo focusing on information literacy, open access, and open research data. Next to offering support, funding, and infrastructure for open access publications, the Open Science team is organizing the Research Data Management Network and Data Stewardship Program at the University of Basel. So today we're going to hear more about open access, open data, and the roles of academic libraries. So thanks a lot for being here, Silke, and we're really curious about your talk. So the stage is all yours. Hi, everybody. I'm really looking forward to talk to you and introduce um, a bit what libraries are doing in the sense of open science. Um, it's a bit of a different talk I'm, to what I'm normally doing. Normally, I'm just introducing what kind of services do we offer and where researchers, um, students, postdocs um, and PhDs can use our services. Today, I'm trying to mix up a bit um, what is a library, why are we shifting to the topic of open science, I will shortly introduce our services and um, also name mostly in the area of open access um, a couple of challenges we as academic libraries are facing. And um, then I'm totally looking forward to the discussion with all of you on what kind of level ever you want to, to jump in. And um, even if it is a concrete service you want to know about or why are libraries active or not active in certain areas of, the, um, of open science. Okay. Ah, and first of all, I want to um, I'm wanna, gonna share that also in the chat afterwards. We have a couple of email addresses. If you really need concrete help, please get in touch with us via open access at Unibas.ch uh, or research data at Unibas.ch. Okay. So open science. I wanted to share because we are talking about it. Share a bit what my approach is or my, my understanding is of open science and most of the libraries, including our library in Basel, are working with. So in general, I understand open science as a practice of science in such a way that others can collaborate and contribute, where research data, lab notes and other research processes are freely available under terms that enable reuse, distribution and reproduction of the research and its underlying data and methods. Important for us as libraries, you will notice that always afterwards is enabling that things are accessible. So that is really one of the main focuses. Um, you as researchers on different levels are focusing probably on the possibilities of open methods and um, what are you able to use in your research and how you validate that. For us as libraries, it is really quite important how do we make things accessible and enable access to research results. Um, open science, when we're talking about open science, we are often talking about open data and open access. But just to give you the bigger picture, often when we are talking about open science, you have uh, um, discussions about open notebooks, open peer review, quite related to open access debates, open source, quite related to debates about open data or reproducibility, about scientific social networks, citizen science, and open educational resources. We as library here in Basel are mostly active in the area of open data, open research data and open access. As a library, we are not involved yet, though that might be nice to do in the future with regard to open source or open educational resources. So what are libraries? I want to shortly introduce we wrote as a library here at Basel also a strategy for us and um, what we are focusing on until 25, but to give you an idea, what are we doing as a library and what are, is our main mandate by the university or also here the um, public in Basel. And in general, we have a mandate to be open to everybody, to the general public and the academic public. So really we should be offering um, information to general public. This means also all kinds of professions out there which might be academic related but are not part of the academy anymore and um, the university itself. We have a 
the job and um, the mandate to build up so-called collections, so to offer and build up research literature, which can be used by you, but also to make, we have a lot of historical material to make this historical material also um, useful for research and that it is, these are sensible collections in a way that it's not bits and pieces there and there, but that these are collections which can be used by researchers. And I think one of the main jobs as a library is to supply information to the general and academic public. And in this context, all libraries, research libraries, have been focusing on the topic of enabling open access and open research data, I would say, for open access since about 20 years, and open research data, I would say, about the last five years. It has become a topic for us. And not that surprising, one of our main focus for under 25 as library is then also that you really want to improve the accessibility and reusability of what we as a university library are providing to you as academic or general public. To give you an understanding, what is a, li a research library? We are about here at Basel, we are about 218 people working at the library. So it's not only the people and colleagues who are at the front desk and helping you if you are borrowing something. We have about one and a half million electronic material, um, still six million physical printed material. So I think that there you see an imbalance also regarding accessibility and reusability. And we are paying about eight million francs per year to um, provide provide um, information material. Mostly, mostly is paid right now for electronic material. So we are paying most of the 8 million to make accessible one and a half million of our media. Okay, just to give you a bit of understanding because it is also playing into the debates of open access later on. Okay. Open access, what is, Libraries are mostly relying on a definition provided by Peter Zuber. Peter Zuber is one of the pioneers in the field of open access. He has been working at the Harvard Library, um, Harvard University first as a philosopher and then later on also as the one responsible for open access. He really, really has um, influenced the open access movement internationally quite a bit since the last 20 years. And his definition, I think, is in a way our mantra for everybody working in libraries. So we understand open access literature is digital, online, free of charge, and free of most copyright and licensing restriction. And what is not mentioned here, but this also implies in a way, and free also of technical barriers or free of barriers in any kind, um, which might hinder access to information. But important really for us all is it's digital and it's free of charge and free of most copyright and licenses restrictions. Um, and when we're talking about open access in the libraries, I think what is important shortly to have a look at is what is the normal publication cycle. So in the um, diagram I have here, we start with the author, which is you, that you are writing something, you're preparing a manuscript, then you are handing it into a journal, then editors are reviewing um, the paper, publishers are organizing um, the entire editorial and um, peer review process in addition, offer um, prints or also distribution of electronic material. And then libraries are coming in and um, have been and are still paying for access to this material. And with open access, this kind of role, what we are taking here, is, has been changing a lot. So I would say it's still mostly common that we as libraries are paying to buy or license electronic materials so that you as researchers can have access to it. But Getting active in the field of open access, we try to change the way under which conditions accessibility is giving. Regarding research data management, I want to shortly um, also read a definition by um, all our German-speaking colleagues on, um, who are working on research data management. And we're saying the term research data management refers to the process of transforming, selecting, and storing research data with the aim of making them accessible, reusable, and reproducible independently from the data offer for a long period of time. Sorry. <laughs> 
To achieve that aim, systematic actions can be taken at all points in the data lifecycle in order to maintain the scientific value of research data, ensure their accessibility for analysis by third parties, and to secure the chain of evidence. And when we are talking about research data management, we are mostly talking about a research data lifecycle, which I pictured here. And there we have the phases of planning. Um, your project, collecting data, analyzing it, preserving and storing the data, publishing it and sharing it, and making it available for discover and reuse. And regarding research data management, there are a couple of main concepts I want to highlight here, which are also important for us as libraries. So we have for one, the idea of open research data, open data, open research data, there the idea is that research data or data created and used in research is made openly available um, as possible and closed as necessary. Closed as necessary implies here mostly legal and ethical constraints. When you're working with sensitive data and the difficulties of making the data openly available for these constraints. But then we have another concept as well, FAIR, where we are talking about the findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability of data. There is not so much about the openness, though FAIR and open is the gold standard, so all data should be FAIR and open. But in FAIR, we are mostly talking about that we prepare data in a way that not only us as humans can um, read it, but also machines can work with it. So it's, that is quite important for the reusability aspect. And what is a bit here now also hidden is an entire topic about open data and open data in itself often implies open data also in the sense of open governmental data, where um, you have administrations, you have ministries, um, and they are, they are creating and collecting data and should be making that kind of data also available. Mostly as libraries or research libraries, we are really related to the concepts, um, concepts of open research data and fair data. And just as a by note or passing note, I want to highlight also um, the bytes. What should we understand about um, research? What, what other ideas are there to understand research data? And um, since a couple of years, in particular, in the indigenous communities of researchers have been highlighting the idea of care, where it's less about the readability by machines, but that there is a people and purpose oriented data use implied. So there we have in the concept regarding research data, where it's about the collective benefit. Again, idea of public um, available benefit of research data, that there is an authority to control how data is used. This is really has been stressed a lot by indigenous um, communities, that there is a responsibility and ethics how it is dealt with by data. So these are concepts which all come into play when we are talking about rows of libraries in the entire landscape of research data management and open data. And picking up again on the research data lifecycle, I tried to highlight where do we come into play as libraries. So research data, and I will mention that also later on, is not only a topic by you as researchers or libraries, but there are a lot of people involved in the topic of research data management, in particular also IT departments, you have ethical commissions, you have the data protection officer. But as libraries, what we are mostly um, participating in in the debates about open and fair research data is how you um, write a data management plan, what kind of data are you having there, um, we might be also involved in documenting the data um, when you're collected data and you want to describe it in, in a way, in particular, you want to um, add metadata to your um, research data. That's something where we can help with because one of the main things we are doing at the library is that we describe knowledge objects with metadata. So that's something we're doing as a library and for sure quite clear is that we um, help with publishing and managing access and preserving in the sense of keeping data. And also, maybe that is also interesting, in the context of research data, we understand us as library also as data providers, not only helping you as researchers how to deal with your data you are creating, but also providing data to you based on what we are having in our collections. 
Okay. So, and with open science, libraries are switching a bit in their focus, what they're doing. So traditionally, libraries have really been concerned to collect everything, to collect everything in one place here in Basel and to make it available for the local community. Shifting to digital material and shifting to open science, we are more concerned not with collecting but with making accessible and in the context of open access that's if how do we can provide financing to make things accessible or, or and to publish them openly to provide infrastructures for publishing um, publications articles and books and to offer help doing open access publication in the context of open research data, we help with the curation of the data, of um, choosing metadata schemas to describe the data, to publish and to reuse data, archiving it, and making our own infrastructures interoperable. And also fitting in there, but not totally um, related to it, we are concerned with open cultural heritage. So in particular in Basel, we really, really have quite a famous collection of historical material going back to the um, 15th century. And we only have, I think we have digitalized less than 10% of what we are having there in our um what we are storing here. So it really, really, we need to put an effort in digitalizing material, make it available for well, for data and digital driven research, um, publish it and make it in particular accessible um, also in the sense of infrastructures. We are less here in Basel, but that's a topic for um, libraries nonetheless. We are less involved in open educational resources, open source and open peer review. Okay. And I want to highlight a few things, what this includes. So also this is a shift for us as libraries. So we are less concerned with having books, but trying to provide you data sets also for your research. So instead of collecting books, we try to make our collections to transform them into data to be reused by US researchers. That we describe what we are having here, describe our collections as data sets so that you have a clear understanding what you can be using there. So, and to describe them as data sets, not just as a single book. Um, this implies a lot that we have to invest in OCR so that the full text become also available for text and data mining. And um, we have to invest in annotations in a, and making annotations possible with what we are using. We need to make it possible that the different platforms we are offering are interoperable with each other and allow reuse across the platforms. And I think what is really, really a challenge for us as libraries is offering data to you as researchers. We are a generic, we are, as a library, we provide generic infrastructures. We do not, cannot provide single projects one by one, we do have to create generic infrastructures and that is a big challenge for us. But in a way, we are also trying to understand how do we become in the setting of open science, open cultural heritage, do we become partners of research or are we only service providers to you? Where where are we standing as a library there and where, where's the limit of what we are doing in order to support you? And I think what is also really a big shift for libraries here in the context of open science, in the context of open science and um, digital material, we are not long, no, no longer relevant only as a local place, as here in Basel, but we become a node in a global network. And so if we are off making things available on a global, um, we are making them available on a global scale. And this means also that everything we are doing should be findable also on a global um, scale. And we need therefore collaborations across also um, institutions um, across the world. Okay. And maybe you touched that in the context of open science, we are often talking about different schools. Why are you thinking open science is a good idea? And um, often when we're talking about open science, we differentiate between a pragmatic school. Yes, it's easier and more efficient for research if we do everything openly. We do it about um, infrastructures where we say, yes, we are collaborating a lot and our infrastructure should be um, openly available. That 
the collaboration is easier. We have a public school in the sense of that science is a public good and should be available to everybody. Then we maybe have a measurement school where you're saying openness is also the basis for new um, measurement of research. And therefore, we really have to talk about different ways of evaluating research also based off criteria of openness. And then we have the democratic school, which is really, really re related to the public school, where we're talking about the idea that knowledge on a global scale should be available for everybody and should um, um, enable equal distribution of knowledge and participation also in democracies. And as Lyris, I think we try to um, situate us with the ideas of open science in the context of publicly available um, information and the democratic school that um, we say it's a role of the libraries that we provide um, information on a global scale to everybody. So we, I think we are following up there on the idea of we have a job to, part, to enable public and democratic use of knowledge and information. Okay, what does this imply in concrete services? I'm talking here now about services at the University Library of Basel, but maybe these are services also, if you're joining in from different um, institutions, are available um, at the institutions our colleagues are working in. So. Regarding open access, it's important to differentiate between different types of open access publications. And mostly we're talking here about our, we try to differentiate different ways of open access by colors. And gold open access that is becoming quite the bit the new normal in publishing open access is the idea that an entire journal and is open access available, not only single articles, but the entire journal is open. For us as libraries, that is important that then mostly it's related to paying to make your article available, that there are costs involved for either you as a single um, author or to us as a library to make it possible that the articles can be published openly. So there are so-called article processing charges involved. Green open access or the idea of making author accepted manuscripts available is the idea you're publishing also with a so-called closed journal. The journal still needs to be subscribed by us as a library to, in order to offer access to it. But in addition to publishing with this journal, you as authors deposit a version of your paper on a repository, on a database. And there are no costs for publishing or reading involved, neither for the reader nor for you as an author, but we as a library provide that infrastructures that this deposit of your literature is possible. Then we are talking often about a hybrid open access or so-called read and publish. And there is a lot of journals out there are still, some articles are freely available where you, where you are able to pay a so-called open access fee then it may be free articles of one journal issue is available. But for the rest of the journal, we as a library still need to have a contract with a journal or with a publisher that the rest of the journal is still available. What we are trying right now in Germany, um, Switzerland, Austria, most or less in all our European countries, we try to make contracts with the publishers which cover in the same time costs for reading and publishing that you as affiliates of the University of Basel are able to publish there, but in the same time to read there without paying any additional money. And then the big hope in the context of open access is Latin OA, diamond open access, or so-called also scholarly-led publishing, where the idea is that you as researchers use infrastructures by us provided by as libraries, but you as researchers decide we want to um, start a new journal um, and that libraries or academic um, learned societies are covering the costs and that there are no costs for readers and authors, but it's really a minimum cost, only what is needed to enable a journal. Okay. And what are we doing as a library here? So we as offer additional funding. If you are publishing in a gold open access journal, we offer additional funding for um, some faculties, 
sadly enough, a decision by the university has been that we are not covering the natural sciences and medicine. So that's probably um, a problem for us, some of you. And we are offering uh, our ticket processing charges up to 2,500 francs. Okay. And we expect um, that the journals you are publishing in are listed in a so-called whitelist. It's a directory of open access journals where internationally it's controlled if these are correct and normal journals and not um, so-called predatory journals. Then we are also um, trying to find agreements with big publishing houses. These are mostly Elsevier, Springer and Wiley. You will see later on these are really nearly the big three publisher publishing houses worldwide. And we try to reach agreements with these publishing houses that it's possible that we have contracts with them which cover um, publishing and reading. Okay, so they were spending, of the 8 million we are spending, we are spending my, quite a lot of money into that kind of contracts um, as a library. Okay, and we are therefore funding there in the indirectly um, on not only reading, but publishing by U.S. authors. Okay. Then for green open access, um, like quite a lot of um, in institutions, we created a so-called institutional open access repositories. Ours is called um, EDOC. It has been, um, it started in 2012 and you see it, it's quite an old uh, repository we are having there. We are right now in the process of um, setting up a new infrastructure and we are offering that repository as a possibility to um, make your author's accepted manuscripts available to um, on a global scale. The repository has a um, interface so that it's readable worldwide by the big um, search engines. Maybe what is important in the context of green open access, please be aware always there, um, what is possible to make openly available without any additional cost is the so-called author accepted manuscript, which as you see here in my slide, differs from the one which in the end is published by the um, journal itself. So the layouted journal version of an article, the version of record with the correct and final um, page numbers and issue numbers is not something we are allowed to publish right now. Okay. And the workflow is the following at the University of Basel, um, that you deposit your um, bibliographical information about um, your publications at UNIVERS, that is the research portal of the university. You upload there also a full text of your article, and then it is checked by our open access team at the university library. And we um, set all the parameters under which it is possible to make this um, publication available. So we check what the publishers are allowing us, and mostly they allow us to make a publication available with a certain time period of embargo where the publication is not available. And once we made it available, the metadata to the object and the publication itself, it's um, on your web page, it's in, um, to be integrated into your web page at the university, but what is more important probably on a global scale, it's findable um, via the global search engines. And also if you're using, for example, Unpaywall, that's an add-on for Firefox or um, um, Google Chrome with which you are able to search for open access publications. Um, all the publications of the University of Basel are this way also available. Okay. And we also offer two infrastructures um, for diamond open access or scholarly lab publishing, where you we provide an infrastructure where you as researchers can decide to create new journals or want to publish a book. Um, and they are called Eterna and Emono. And the services we are offering there, we are doing consulting. Um, we are opening up a sandbox for you, do trainings, offer some, some style templates. We provide a um, digital object identifier. 
maybe also um, if it is a journal, a so-called um, international standard serial number, and we are archiving the material. What we are not doing, we are not doing the lecturate of the paper, or we're doing no layout. We are not doing a design of the web page, which goes beyond the free style templates we are offering. We are not involved in the review process, so as in other journals as well, that's part of the editorial work, and we are not involved in the editorial work. But we help, and if you want to set up something, we are doing that also as consultancy. And for the moment being, this service is um, without any cost for all members of our university. Nearly all Swiss libraries are offering a similar service as well. Research data. Okay, that's a bit shorter because research data, it's not only something libraries are doing, but as I mentioned before, research data or open research data implies so many aspects and implies really a lot of also um, knowledge and competence and support by the IT departments of universities. So we set up at the University of Basel a so-called network, the network research data management. And in the network, different service units of the university are helping you with the different aspects of research data management. And because this here, sorry, these are mainly the generic services as SciCore, the library IT services, which are generic and not discipline specific. We also set up um, in since two years, the so-called data stewardship program, where we try to establish in each faculty and department discipline based um, data stewards, which help with subject related questions in the research data management process. Okay, and the data stewards help you as a first contact and they offer you subject specific support and training regarding research data management and organize additional help. Just to mention a few, for example, at the Faculty of Science, we have the Biocentrum, the colleagues from the research IT, Michael Potvinets, or Oliver Biermeyer from the microscopy um, core facility who are working as data stewards and in the Faculty of Economics, totally different area. We have Birgit Knopfle, who is there responsible um, as a research management um, assistant, and she is helping with um, data support as well. Okay, as a library, we are mostly organizing generic support, generic trainings um, and um, counseling. We do it doing information and handouts. And we also organize the university-wide um, network. But our role as a library is mainly that we offer as a service the review of data management plans when you have to write one for funders. We su offer support when describing data. If you want to describe your data objects with metadata and we help regarding publishing of the data and archiving it. And we also offer the service of digitalization of material, mostly text materials, which then can be used for research. Okay, what are challenges? I listed here mostly open access challenges because these are the, um, the challenges I'm facing right now. So for example, green open access. I just shortly mentioned Green Open Access is a publication of the author accepted manuscript. In parallel, the journal is still publishing a normal journal. And the journal or the publisher allows us as a library to publish the Green Open Access version mostly only after 12 months. So there is a so-called embargo time, which um, between the publication of the original um, article in a journal and when we are allowed as a library to make the author accepted manuscript available. What is now happening is that the our research funder in Switzerland, the Swiss National Science Foundation, expects all researchers which are funded by them, who are funded by them, that they make everything openly available right away. So there is a conflict existing, there's coming up a conflict between what the publishers are allowing and what the funders are allowing. And we as a library are in between, as US researchers, how to deal with this situation, follow the funder and how do, can we do it? That is quite easily for you as a researcher to make your things available without embargo times. Hmm? 
Hmm? This probably probably includes a lot of negotiations with the research and with the publishers where we as a library need to help you, but that is a challenge right now. So, so it's in between publisher and requirements for funders. Next one, also a funder requirement, which is making a couple of things for us a bit difficult. And did I? No, I didn't put it in there. Um, in the last couple of years, we saw in particular with Gold Open Access Publishing, a really a huge amount of so-called special issues. We really see an increase of publication, which is really a stale, a, um, a steep, steep, steep curve upwards and um, a multiplications of um, publications, which created a lot of doubts if the peer review process and the quality assurance process of these publications, if we see this incredible increase is still possible. And then the focus of all these debates are the so-called special issues and the increase of special issues in the last years. And the SNF decided they do not think that articles of special issues are controlled in the same way as articles in other journals. And so they do not pay anymore for articles in so-called special issues. And this will be totally also the question, how do we follow up as a library on that? And how do we um, consult you as researchers? Okay. Big, big, big um, thing, which is, isn't new because also the slides here are from 2013. We still are in the situation that we have a so-called oligopoly by publishers out there. And it's dominated by Reed Elsevier, Springer, Wiley, American Chemical Society, and Taylor Francis. These really are the big five publishers. And changing the publication landscape depends always on how can we deal with the big publishers who are dominating the publication field? Um, and the oligopoly of the big publishers implies that the, it's also possible, I do not have a slide here, but regarding open ex, gold open access, we see an increase of costs paid per article, which is a norm. So open access once started with the idea that we stop with spending money, now we see an increase of money, and it also has a lot to do with the oligopoly of some publishers. Um, and though we try to find deals with the big publishers, where we try to transform the um, publication landscape to an open access transformation, and we want to do it in Switzerland, we have a mandate to do this kind of deals with the big publishers without spending additional deals. This means maybe that we come into a situation, and this is the situation now for 24, that we might not have a so-called deal with a publisher, in this case Elsevier, and this will imply we do not have access to the publications for reading, but we also do not have a deal which covers publishing with this publisher, with Elsevier. So um, Germany had five years of no deal. The MIT in the US had, I think, more than five years no deal with Elsevier. But this is a situation where, where we also, as a library, providing access and enabling publications are in a dilemma to how to deal with it if we are coming in a situation where we do not have a deal with a publisher. And other challenge, one of the big ideas was in the open access area that we, there are so-called diamond open access journals, journals which are created and led by um, researchers. That was a big deal. Okay, researchers can do their own journals, are not dependent on publishers. There are nearly only there are only a few journals of that kind out there. So the entire idea of scholarly led open um, open access publication is not really happening so far. And we do not know why and how we can enable that as a library. Okay, these were a couple of challenges I mentioned here. They are all open access. I think they are the ones which me preoccupy the most right now, or are only for libraries quite relevant. But I'm totally happy to discuss now. I think we have 20 minutes left to discuss your questions, also concrete questions on services or where you need an information, but also what are your, inform your opinions and considerations on the role of libraries in the context of open science. Thank you. <laughs>